Hello everyone, um, we're going to get started. So my name is Diana Magliano and I'm a professor at Monash University and I'm the coordinator of the Masters of Public Health. In addition to that, I am a um, researcher and epidemiologist for Baker, which is co-located at the same campus as um, the Monash Medical School. So I have two hats. Um, I've also taught epidemiology in the Masters for something like 13 years which puts me in good speed to sort of give this talk and understand the whole masters in terms of um, life as a scientist or life as a researcher or life working in public health. Um, on my right, I have um, an ex-student, uh, Deborah Rose, who will now wait to you. <laughs> um, and she will be available to ask questions and give, give you some insight about the course and life after the course. So let's get started. Um, I'd like you all to raise your hands if you can hear me, please. Okay, that's great. I've, I've seen some hands. Um, if you want to ask questions, feel free via the Q&A app um, dialog box, and we might answer them at the end of the lecture. If they're really complex about um, certain subjects and certain points, I might prefer those um, to later, depending on what they're, what's involved. Okay. So the Monash Master of Public Health is run out of Monash Medical, uh, Monash School of Population Health and Preventive Medicine. And we are located at the Alfred Hospital on Commercial Road in Paran. So we're one of the largest public health schools in Australia and I would say we're the best public health school. We're also the oldest. Um, we have 120,000 staff, 2,000 undergraduate plus undergraduate students, lots of postgraduate students including masters and PhDs. We publish very well from that department and we get lots of money in funding, mainly from the National um, NHMRC, National Health and Medical Research Council. We're leaders in several areas. One of those is the clinical registries, and we're also leaders in major trials, having done the largest um, NIH-funded trial in Australia, which came out of our department, and that was called the SPREE, and it just reported out last year. We're also a leader in occupational health and safety, and if there's any kind of issue in terms of occupational health or people dying in a, in a building in Melbourne or people dying in the fires, um, it's our department that gets called to do the research. So as I mentioned, we're located on Commercial Road Paran, and we're sandwiched between the hospital, um, the Baker Institute, which is where my other work is, the Burnett Institute, um, so, a really nice place to do to come and study. Um, lots of research gets done here, lots of clinical science, and um, it's a really dynamic place to do science. So what is public health? Well, public health is understanding the health of populations and monitoring that health by governments and um, other health systems. And it encompasses population practice and policy, and a little bit of clinical me measurement. And so at, at the department, we do health policy, we run some clinical trials, having run the biggest in Australia to date of 18,000 people. We do lots of population studies. We do a bit, bit of work in global health, health promotion. We have a very strong group in occupational and environment health monitoring run by Malcolm Sim. We have a growing Health Service Management Department. We're running a few subjects in clinical change and climate change and health, and we have several large clinical registries and biobanks. And so we encompass all the relevant parts of public health. So there are many ways to study in our department, and we have a really a nice, unique teaching style. Because we're located at the hospital and like the big research precinct of MREP, um, our masters and our PhDs are taught by world-class academics and clinicians. So these are people who um, have PhDs, um, medical degrees, and they still work in the hospital, so their experience is really relevant. 
So you can immerse yourself in a cutting-edge environment. Our work, our, our courses, our programs cater for busy professionals, and we're really flexible to meet the professional interests of study life balance. We know that you have families. We know that you have other commitments. It's a really collegial place. And if you've, after you've done your master's and you want to do some research, this is certainly the place to be. So this is what we offer. We offer a master's in public health, one in health service management, forensic science, clinical measurement, clinical research methods, biostats, and occupational um, and environmental health. And a few of those you can uh, graduate a bit uh, earlier, um, at 18 months or one year, there's a, these are smaller components rather than doing the entire Masters. Okay, so this is for the Master of Public Health. So we have a multimodal system. So we have three ways, of, three entry points of getting into the Masters of Public Health. So if you're straight out of university, you get offered the 96 point Masters, which is about 16, sub, uh, 16 subjects. Um, and you don't have to have any experience or any honours to get in. You don't even have to have a science undergrad. You could do be an arts undergrad or politics undergrad. Um, but if you have done a science undergrad and you have done honours and you have maybe got some experience in the real world in science or something that I would deem as public health related, you can get in by the 72 point masters, which is uh, less subjects. Um, and so it ends up being a bit shorter. And if you're a medical doctor and you have, have enrolled in your part one of your training, you only have to do 48 points, which is more less subjects again, and it takes you less time. So we enroll everyone in the 96, and then I adjust that down to the next level masters and putting on your experience. So what we'll teach you, so we'll teach you how to think broadly about health. Um, and I'm not talking about cells and, and microscopes and test tubes, I'm talking about health of people and populations. So we'll teach you how to analyse and interpret health data. We'll teach you how to read a paper. We'll teach you how to understand the, the news on science and you'll understand the errors that they make in the news when they talk about a science report. We'll teach you about study design. We'll teach you how to apply public health knowledge to improve health of uh, others in the community. We've got some new subjects teaching leadership and management that you might need in your jobs in the health sector. And we'll teach you how to um, talk about your science and how to deliver a, um, an oral presentation to your colleagues and to the public. Um, we'll teach you how to create and implement public health programs uh, and how to understand health economics principles and how to design and analyze public health policy. So this will depend on which subjects you do. But, um, our, all our subjects will deal with um, a vast array of these uh, topics. So the first one is uh, that we'll talk a bit about is the Master of Health, um, health, health Services, we use Health Services and, and Management. Uh, it's a two-part Masters and it focuses on Health Services Management. And that's kind of done by people who work in hospital administration or who want to have a career in that area. The core units of this are you learn a bit about economics, financial management, you do a bit of law for health systems, you do a little bit of health policy, of course you do some subjects in leadership and how to understand how systems work, you learn about clinical government and you end up doing a six month case study in health services. They're the core units. And then you can choose your electives from um, a whole wide range of areas, research methods, economics, more leadership, uh, epidemiology and biostats, which of course I would encourage everyone to do because that's my area. You'll do some implementation and innovation in healthcare. Um, you can learn about patient safety and there are some other um, units you could look at as well. And every year we offer, um, we develop new units to be um, contemporary with what's going on in science. So we've just released a, a unit on demography for next year, which is going to be quite interesting. So the next master's I'll talk about is the Master's of Occupational Health. Um, uh, and we abbreviate that to uh, MONCO. Um, and it's part A, part B uh, master's. You do 48 
points which are core and another 28 core points which um, involve a research project. Most people do this masters already work in the area in some in some kind of way as an occupational doctor or um, in a business way that they're the occupational health and safety officer. So and that's all how we encourage that masters to run. So this is run by a really strong department which does a lot of occupational health and safety. The core units here are, of course, you learn about occupational health and safety. You learn about chemicals and hazards, and you have core subjects of epidemiology and statistics. You learn how to assess a workplace, how to assess physical hazards. Um, you learn about safety and the psychological working environment, and then you get to choose some electives, or you do the six-month research stream. And then we have the Masters of Forensic Science. And that's a smaller master's, but it's um, uh, becoming really popular. And you learn how to apply science to a forensic um, medicine. Um, so obviously, you you've got to understand how uh, bushfires happen by collecting evidence and um, identification of important evidence. Um, and on the right here, you see um, a dentist who did this master's, and she became a forensic odontologist. Now for the Masters of Forensic uh, Science, there are three streams, clinical forensic medicine, forensic medicine, and the dental one. And these are ideal for people who have got a medical degree, a dentistry degree, biomedical science, or uh, nurses. Okay, then we have what I would say would be the, um, conceptually the hardest Masters, and that's the Masters of Biostats. Um, that's done purely um, all online. Um, it's a quite a small master's, but it's, and it's really challenging. And you have your core subjects, and your um, uh, you have a, a, a research project at the end. So to do this master's, you have to be able to flip numbers in your head. There's no doubt about that. It's challenging, um, but we do offer this mathematical background for biostat subjects where you do first up so you, you know what you need to know to run through the masters moving forward. And again, you have to do a core subject of epidemiology and you do all these other statistical subjects and these are all varying in um, um, difficulty. Some of them are easier than others. And then you can have do a, a research project as um, uh, the part two. And we have the Masters of Clinical Research. This is designed for busy clinicians, and you learn how to understand research, how to conduct research, how to write projects, and, and how to um, understand the research that's going on around you in hospitals and the papers you're reading. And we have Master of Clinical Measures, uh, Medicine, and this is designed for people in the emergency, uh, work in the emergency departments of the hospitals and it's a joint venture between the Alfred and Monash, and it's a really good master's for medical graduates, and they get to complete a clinical placement in um, uh, busy trauma centres. And it prepares uh, senior clinical, it prepares graduates for senior clinical and operational leadership roles. So I often get asked, what can I do after a master's? So there's no job that says, uh, that's directly how do you have a Masters of Public Health? But people who have a Masters of Public Health can work in the following areas. So you work in academia, so you work in research, you could work in biostats, health informatics, public health. Um, if you do the human rights subjects, you can work in human rights. If you do the Masters involved in occupational and environmental health, you can do work in that area. If you work in policy, um, health service management and delivery and health economics and forensics. So for example, you can work with me in an epidemiology department. You can work on a trial as a project manager or as an epidemiologist or as a data person on a trial. You can work at the Department of Health in various departments, in their policy or the epidemiology department or the health service management jobs. You could work in pharma, so you could be a medical liaison officer, or you could work in reimbursements, or you could even work in sales. And then you can work in all the NGOs like um, Heart Foundation, Kidney Australia, 
Diabetes Australia, where you can do more health promotion kind of work. So the biggest jobs coming out for graduates now are data oriented jobs. And so if you want a job, if you're good with numbers, um, you should do a master's with and load up with sort of the data oriented subjects and you'll get a really good job as a data scientist or some kind of data analyst. And that means you can work in sort of any place where they do analysis. Other students who finished have worked in um, places like Medibank and Bupa and places like that. So there's lots and lots of ways to get into lots of different industries. And the only advice I'd have for you is to make sure your master's is a good one and make sure you, you get good scores in all your subjects. Um, and that will help you get a really good job. And now I'm going to pass on to Deborah, and then we're going to ask and then you have the opportunity to ask some questions. Thanks, Diana. Um, my name is Deb Rhodes, and um, I'm currently working as an infection prevention nurse consultant at a large public health service in Melbourne. Um, over my uh, career spanning um, over three decades, I've um, worked in a broad range of clinical specialties, including intensive care, operating theatres, um, executive and travel health. I've also worked in phase one clinical trials in humans. Um, and I've always had a very, very strong interest in um, patient and staff safety, and also in infectious diseases. Um, most recently, my work over the last decade, um, I've been involved as an occupational health nurse where I've been immunising um, healthcare worker population of staff in a large um, metropolitan health service um, and more recently moved into infection prevention. Um, during this most recent um, role, I've been able to coordinate two organisational wide quality improvement projects to enhance patient safety within the clinical environment. And it was through that work um, that I became more aware that I didn't have a sufficient understanding of biostatistics and epidemiology. Um, so we published a couple of papers in relation to our successful improvements, um, but that was an area where I felt I was really lacking in knowledge. So I decided to investigate how I could improve that knowledge, um, particularly in the realm of um, epidemiology and biostatistics. And, um, was fortunate enough to be um, accepted onto the Masters of Public Health program at Monash University. Um, the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> and um, so those were the key things that I hoped to achieve from completing the Masters of Public Health. It was really to, as Diana pointed out, um, become better equipped at being able to look at statistics um, and read papers and to be able to weigh up the evidence in this evidence-based world that we live in. Um, so um, through the studies, which um, covered a lot of master's subjects um, beyond biostatistics and epidemiology, so looked at, uh, did some work in the research area, um, studied environmental influences on health, climate change, um, and the economics of public health, um, it became really opened up the, the whole um, view of what healthcare is all about. So the Masters gave me a lot more than just um, an understanding of biostatistics and epidemiology. It really did um, give me a much deeper understanding of how the healthcare system works and also pointed out who is the most vulnerable within our community where improvements should really be directed. So it certainly equipped me with skills um, and connected me with the academic world um, and gave me a lot more confidence. Um, it was really fantastic the way that the course was structured um, because it was so broad reaching and comprehensive um, and um, it was fantastic to be able to study alongside fellow students, some who've already had very distinguished careers. So there's a great deal that you can learn from your fellow students um, through that bonding experience. And the, um, the lecturers were all absolutely incredible and we really had the benefit also of hearing from 
expertise from outside of Monash University who would come to speak to us um, about their fields. Um, so it was an incredible experience. Um, it does open up your mind to becoming more engaged, I think, in, in what's happening in our community, particularly around healthcare, um, and how that um, connects with other issues in our society, such as inequality um, and all of those sorts of things. Um, but it gives you a really good grounding in the nuts and bolts of what you need to know to take forward to change things in society and healthcare for the better of our population. So um, in terms of how I've used the degree so far, I'm still in the same role that I was before I started the Masters and still loving that. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to secure a sessional teaching position in Monash University and have also put forward my first um, submission for um, a research proposal which I'll be presenting at a conference in November. So there's signs of um, maybe where this is taking me forward, but the, uh, the world is your oyster with this degree. So um, yeah, embrace it. Thanks, Deborah. I just want to add that I've also done the Masters. Um, I did it after my PhD, and I, I really loved it. I really soaked it up um, after doing a bench PhD to understand health in a real broad way. Um, it was really interesting, and I loved every single subject I did. And I, I loved epidemiologists, and in fact, that's what made me become an epidemiologist. So, let's answer the questions. Okay, so the first question we have is, what level of maths competency do you need um, for the biostats subjects, or do you need a background in okay. maths? So, good question. So, I did first year university maths at Melbourne, so that was called 101. Um, and I did pure and applied at VCE, and I was okay with the maths. My um, colleague, hadn't done university maths, and she was less okay, but she still got a distinction. So, you, I would certainly suggest you have two and applied at high school, that would be methods and specialist. specialist. But they do give you a little tiny, um, not a test, but they give you a little handout before you enrol, and they say, can you do this? Um, and if you can, you'll be fine. And if you can't, you can still do it, but you're going to have to put in some hours, and I mean 10 hour, over 10 hours a week. But once you've done that, the maths um, peters off after that first, those first couple of subjects. And I'm not sure whether you can answer this one, but someone who has a Master's of Nursing Science in two years in the workplace, would they be eligible for the 72-point Master's? Yes. Oh, great. Uh, that was a nice quick answer. Well, assuming they've got a WAM, yeah, but I assume you do. Okay. Yes. So I've got another one. What is the approximate face-to-face -face time for the multimodal MPH and R lessons here at the Alpha? <coughs> so currently we have uh, three subjects which are face-to-face. -face. You can do it all online if you want. And there's block days for the online subjects. About two block days, compulsory per subject. Now for EPI, stats and research methods, and one other subject. Um, we're going to make that face-to-face -face next year as well, is about two hours a week face-to-face, -face, okay? But you don't have to do the face-to-face -face versions of those subjects because they run in two modes, face-to-face -face and online. So if you do the online versions, you come to the block dates. If you do the face-to-face -face versions, you come two hours every week, um, mainly on a Thursday, I believe. That's what it was this year. Does that answer that question? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure if you'll know, I'm not quite sure what this person is actually asking, but I think they want to know the requirements for the Master of Health Service Management. If you've come from a non-related discipline, so I'm presuming perhaps a non-health background, is, is there a different requirement? Yeah, I don't select for that Master's, sorry, so okay, I can't, we can answer that off. can't really answer it. I need to select for the Master of Public Health. Yeah. Um, another question is, um, can you work full time and do this program? What's what? Okay, so I work full time and did this program. Okay. So I did two subjects and worked full time. Um, my classes on in that was they were on a Wednesday afternoon, and I got that time off work, which I worked at Monash, so it was easy. 
So I think you can do it, but you've got to find the time on the weekends to do the work or after after work. Um, and there are assessments online, assessments every sort of second week. So you have to do critical, critical reflections or discuss things online. So you have to make that time. So even if you're doing it online, completely online, you have to make that time. So preserve that time. Um, there's another question here. Someone who has extensive work, work experience in the non-for-profit industry, can um, you get any credit for work experience in lieu of some of the subjects in the MPS? Uh, and, uh, sorry, Master of Public Health, and how does it work? So if that's an option at all. <laughs> you won't get credit per se. It depends on what you've done, but probably you'll get into the 72 Masters. Uh, point masters rather than get credit. If you are a statistics teacher, perhaps you'll get credit for the statistics subject, but I can't think of another example where you would get credit, but you'd have to apply and we'd have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, great. Um, are some of the forensic subjects available as electives for the Masters of Public Health? Every, anything's open. I can approve anything I, I need to approve as long as it doesn't clash. And the points may, you know, work. Okay, so if you consider it into your life and you've done your call subjects, I don't see why not. Okay. Um, it just oh, hang on. Oh, for the research pro project, can this be a qualitative research? Yes, it can be. Although I'm supervising them at the moment, and I'm not a qualitative researcher, but I will find someone to supervise a qualitative project for you. Okay. So yes, you can do that. Right. I'm not sure I don't have any more questions popping up, but if anyone has any, um, oh, hang on. I've got half a question. I do not have a bachelor degree, but extensive work experience. Okay, so, so no. Okay, so perhaps. <laughs> so we have had a couple of cases where people didn't have degrees and they still got into their masters, and we're we're. Um, I've got one student like that now, and apparently Deborah was also like that. Yes, I I worked. Um, uh, I well, I trained as a as a nurse through the hospital system. Um, I won't tell you how long ago, um, and was basically accepted um, on the basis of my years of experience and other certificates that I'd um, collected along the way. Mm. So that's possible, but we do set set some thresholds for that. And again, we'll, we'll deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, is there a certain GPA requirement or WAM for the Masters? Yes, 60%. That's a minimum? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and are there any subjects related to the ageing population in the Masters of Public Health? Um, there's no subject with the word ageing in it, but we do, with, obviously, we deal with chronic disease in a, a vast array of subjects, um, and that deals with ageing. But um, we're always designing new subjects to meet the market, and I think we're on track to design a subject similar to that, some, something about ageing. Okay. Um, a graduate from the Bachelor of Biomedical Science, would they be eligible for any credit? They would get it into the 72 point masters. And, you know, with that kind of degree, you'll find the math is pretty easy. Great. Um, no more questions on screen that I have. So I think we've exhausted those. So unless there's anything else. You would like. um, I just want to mention one more thing. We're developing a um, internship subject where you go and do a practicum somewhere for three months, either at like a pharma company or Department of Health or where I work at Baker. And so for those of you who want to get real life experience, that could be a subject and there'll be some kind of critical reflection as an assessment or and a talk perhaps. We haven't finalised the details of assessment. So and if you're really good in those placements, you often get offered part time jobs and things like that. So we've got a question of course a couple more have come in. Um, are there any Commonwealth supported places available? I think they're gone. Mm. <laughs> Um, um, I'll ask the postgrad office, but I'm pretty sure they're gone. Mm. Okay. Um, 
Are there any opportunities for study abroad programs or to undertake any of your study overseas in the Master of Public Health? So you can do that, and we've got one lab doing that, but it's certainly a bit expensive way to do that. Um, and the legwork to do that is hard. So I wouldn't be uh, advising that, but we could look into that if that's what you really want to do. Yeah, you know, it's got to be at a approved university where I can I can understand the standards. So a good university in the States or the UK, which is equivalent to Monash, you need to be probably a top 100 university. Okay. Okay. We do have a question about fee help, um, but we might answer that offline. Most students are eligible for, for fee, fee help. help. Yes. Yeah. And so that, that gives them that opportunity to not have to pay up front. But paying up front, you get a discount still, I assume? No. No. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, so I think it's really important about where you do your Masters of Public Health. I know you can do it in many places in Australia now, but we're the old of school, we're the best masters. So having a Monash Master of Public Health when I screen people for jobs who come and work with me at Monash or at Baker, I certainly look at where they've got their Masters of Public Health from, and I look at how good how good your score is, how good your, your subjects are. Okay, subject score. No more questions. So. So I think if there's no more questions, I'll say goodbye. If you want to email me, I'm I do on Google. Um, or probably at the bottom on one of these slides. Um, and I'm happy to um, answer any questions or give some career advice. Thanks, and um, Sarah, good luck.